I am a documentary filmmaker and a non-fiction writer. And I run a non-profit in Mumbai, India called Point of View, which promotes the points of view of women through media, art and culture. Well, it's embarrassing, but I'm still working on the book that I was working on at Hedgebrook, which is a book called Selling Sex. And it looks at the story of the world's largest sex worker collective, which is based in Calcutta, India, and has a membership of about 70,000 women, mostly, who are in sex work. For many, many women, it is a, sort of a way to earn a living. And at the same time, for many women, it's something that they really have been forced into and they don't want to be there. So part of sort of dealing with it intellectually is that it's a paradox because both these worlds exist. I, the reason I actually applied to Hedgebrook is because quite honestly in Bombay, I wear so many different hats that it was impossible for me to get this book done. So I had done the research, I had done many trips to Calcutta, um, and I had, all, I had like 75 to 100 hours of interviews. But I really didn't have the headspace to sit down and sift through all these interviews and really look for the story that I wanted to tell. Um, and writing needs a certain amount of concentration and you know, a certain amount of being able to focus inwards as opposed to focusing outwards at everything else that is going on in your crazy life. It helped me really strip down everything to the essence so I could get rid of a lot of the stuff that was sort of inessential to the book that I was writing. So I think that actually made a huge difference. I think the other difference was really being able to share my work with other women who were in residence here and getting the feedback. I think for me, I really feel like I can only write in the mornings till lunchtime because I feel like writing demands so much more concentration and effort than anything else I do that I really need it to be after I've had like my first big caffeine rush in the morning and I'm fully there. See, I've found over the years that I that material needs to get into my subconscious and I need to sleep on it at least one night because something happens that doesn't happen otherwise if it hasn't sort of seeped into my subconscious. So often it's, writing is not according to me a fully conscious process. So I find that when I have looked at the material, even if it's just the day before, and I've just slept on it and I sit down at the computer I often don't need to look at my notes to the same extent. It often sort of starts, you know, writing itself semi-automatically. I think my day job is both really good for and really bad for my writing. I'll tell you how it's good. I think it's good in terms of throwing up content. For instance, I got to thinking about writing a book on prostitution and sex work because of the documentation and all the other stuff that I had done around sex workers' rights, which is part of my job at Point of View. So in terms of content, that's fantastic. But one of the dilemmas is in my, you know, how to balance the two. How do you actually balance art and activism? And to be honest, one of the things that again Hedgebrook helped me with is because I had been running this organization for 12 years, and I had been doing a lot of writing in the organization, but that was sort of like reports for foundations, etc. There's a particular voice that you adopt in those. Now that voice is appropriate for those products, but that voice is not appropriate for a non-fiction book. And I found that what I actually needed to do, and this was one of the real reasons I needed to get away, is I actually needed to like strip away all those layers of voices. You know, the donor report, the activist whatever, the advocacy voice, etc. Push that all away because those were also writing voices. And it was only when I had gotten rid of them that I could actually start reclaiming what was my voice as a writer. And I'm now at the place where I've written about five or six chapters, but I still need another nine months or so to really finish the book, you know, do the first draft and things like that. 
Okay, one of the things that I've been wanting to do if I can ever get this book out of my hair is um, I would be very interested in writing a book on the hunt for the AIDS vaccine. Strange though this sounds. And again, I think there's a really interesting story to be told there. You know, I have to say that I'm not at all interested in fiction. I really am not. What I'm interested in is telling non-fiction through fictional devices, almost in a fictional way.